Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord is good. His mercy and do it forever. Amen. All right. We're going to get right into God's word. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Thank you very much. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Amen. We are joining information. Whole lot of information. One thing is to be saved. Another thing is to be taught. Amen. Amen. When you're taught, you know how to live. Thank you very much. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter number three. We're going to start reading verse number four. And we're going to read verse four uh, down to verse 11. If you don't have a Bible, you can look on the screen. Well, we do also have the word. Are you there? All right, let's read together. And such trust have we through Christ to God. What? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killed it, but the Spirit give it life. But if the ministration of death written and engraved in stone was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not satisfy to behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Now let's go to the book of Ephesians. From the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 15. <coughs> Thank you very much. Ephesians chapter number 1. And verse number 15. We're going to read that to verse 21. You get your subject from there. The first thing I gave you is the administration of the Spirit, which is our series. Now we'll get our subject. Thank you very much. From the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse 15, this is after a person is saved, okay? This is the Holy Ghost is praying for the believer. Let's read together. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love to all saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. You may be seated. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, this is a prayer that the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Ghost, when I say Paul, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit ministry, prayed for the church, for the believer, after the believer was saved. So what we want to do today is we want to get into the Word of God. All right, we're going to pray. Father, we thank you now for your Holy Spirit who has been given us so we can receive our inheritance. We thank you that we can receive all things now through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So now... We know we have to pray. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything you have given us in Christ. Now we need your help. We need you to teach us, lead us, and guide us, and help us to understand your word and your new covenant. And all the church agree with that, said amen. amen. All right, now what I like to do, I like to uh, remind us that we are, first of all, we are in volume six already. And today, if I'm not mistaken, we are part three. Anybody got anything different? 
I'm in part two. Part two? You got some agreement with that? Okay. Now, uh, if you notice, I had to end up splitting, splitting one of my teachings there. I'm, I'm on the R letter. I get back on the, on the letter next week. All right. We, we're supposed to have one of my sons from Saginaw to be our guest speaker at 11 o'clock, uh, who also now his church preaches the gospel of grace. So we give God the praise and the glory for that. Amen. Uh, so we give God the glory for that. Okay. He and his wife should be here for our 11 o'clock service. But anyway, uh, I want to continue. As you notice, in this series, I told you there are three what's. And what we want to do today is to take those three what's, because that's what we're going to be ministering on. I gave you the first what, and everything is about him, is everything that he has. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding. Now, first of all, once a person is born again, is what you're going to see in this teaching. Now you have received the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go through that this morning. Number one, you have to receive the Holy Spirit because that's how you have relationship. The second thing you must have is fellowship. Now, that is the first thing. That's why the hope of your calling is so important. I ask everyone in here to buy that tape. I keep saying to you, invest $3 or $5 or whatever and get that CD. What is the hope of his calling? Because first of all, if you don't know how you were saved, you're going to have a problem with your inheritance because I'm going to start the day teaching on what is his rich and glorious inheritance. That's going to be my message. What is his rich and glorious inheritance? But you got to know the first what is what is the hope of his calling. The first thing he did was call you. He called you for sonship. And when he called you, he gave you his Holy Spirit. That's what happened. Once he called you, he gave his Holy Spirit. And then also, now because he gave you the Holy Spirit, we develop a relationship with him as a son. So that's the first thing that I want to do today. I want to be able to establish that uh, in the Word of God. Now, let's go to John chapter 14. I got a lot to cover today, but I want to show you what he gave us. Now, Jesus talked about this in John 14, and the Holy Ghost is going to answer that today. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, most people read this at funerals. That's what we hear it mostly, but it's never explained. Today it will be explained. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, and verse 1. We're going to start there. Thank you. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus speaking to his disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Watch the verse 2. In my Father's house. Now that's very important because you got to know what the Father's house is. He gave you where? When he say in, in your Father's house, in my Father's house, just like my supper today. My supper today, when I read uh, Ephesians 1.18, it talks about his glory and inheritance in the saints. So he gave you where his inheritance is. So you don't have to look around in the building to see his inheritance. He's told them it was in the saints. But we as New Testament believers, we are not convinced who the saints are. So I'm going to have to give you that in this teaching for you to know where the inheritance. If you were in the days of the Apostle Paul and he told you what the inheritance was, then he told you where the inheritance was found was in the saints. Now, all of us in here today, 2,000 years later, should know what the inheritance is if I tell you that the inheritance was in the saints. Because he wasn't talking about the breakfast they ate that morning, was it? Oh, that would not be the inheritance, would it? 
You know, see, the only way you're going to know this kind of stuff, you got to have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you need to come to a conclusion that I don't know nothing to be talking about up there. You don't know maybe because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, let's move on. So that's what I gave you. What is the richest of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? But I just named this, what is his rich and glorious inheritance? Because I don't have enough room to put it there. But it was in the saints. We're going to show you that also. Now, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 14, he told them, let not your heart be troubled. Now, he's talking to his 12 disciples. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Then he's going to say something to them. In my father's house, there are many mansions. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Not going to be, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, most people at funerals, the first thing they think in their mind is, he going to build a church for us, or he going to build a house for me. So we come out with dumb songs like, uh, Angel, get my mansion ready. I'm from the South, so we, we understood that. They, they always thought the Lord was going to build them a mansion, and when he got through building a mansion, he's going to come back and get them. That's not what God did. So you have to understand and get your mind renewed from religion, because that's all that is, religion. Most people do not understand the word heaven and earth. First of all, heaven is a spirit realm. You are in the earthly realm because you're in the flesh. I'm talking to your soul now. Your soul is in the earth realm because it's in this body. Once you leave out of this body, which it has for which your salvation is concerned, you have been put in Christ. Christ is the heavenly realm. Now, if you don't get that, get this. When you walk on the ground, you're in the earth realm. You understand that if I can wave my hand and not hit nobody, all of this is heavenly realm. All of this is heavenly. It doesn't make any difference. It's heavenly. Heavenly means unseen, invisible, spiritual. So you have to understand that once you step out of this body, the day that Jesus Christ was still on earth, he had never been to the Father. But he had risen from the dead. And he wanted to rose from the dead, he stepped out of the tomb. Now he had on a glorified body. But they could not touch him because they would defile him. He had not reported to the Father. So he had to go back to the Father which did not take via airlines. He, he just went to the Father, which is in the spirit realm. And to come back to them, all they had to do was step back in the natural realm. He went from the seen to the unseen, from unseen to the seen, to the visible to the invisible. To invisible. That's what you must understand. It's not like I'm going to go up, after I get so far up, then I enter into heaven. Now, once you enter into Christ, you enter into heaven or the kingdom of heaven. Christ is called what? The kingdom of heaven. The Father is the kingdom of heaven and the Son is the kingdom of God. But that kingdom you entered in already in Christ. All right. Now, for as the invisible realm, there are more invisible beings around us than visible, which are called angels. But you don't see them because they are in the invisible realm. But they, this place is charred with angels. Has to be. Because we're here. Do you understand that? See, most people don't understand that because they don't see that. But that's why you have faith. To believe the invisible. To see the invisible. Understand it. All right. Now, in John chapter 14... In verse number two, Jesus says, I go to, in my father's house. First, he said, I go to prepare, prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mentioned. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then he said in the same verse, I go to prepare a place for you. Let's go see in what place did he prepare for them. Now, if I know where I am today, 
Did I know what place he prepared for me? Let me say it again. If I know where I am today, I know what place he prepared for me. All right, let's go show you that. I, somebody can find that. Somebody can find that if I'm going to give you that. Be studious. Jesus says, a body thou hast prepared me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me to do thy will, O God. So what did the Father prepare for him? A body. A body. Now we know that we are now the body of Christ. But Jesus could not have entered into that body, that glorified body, which is called the body of Christ, unless he was raised from the dead. So we know what the Father prepared for him, a body. Is it Hebrew also 10? Hebrew 10 and 5. Let's look at it in the New Covenant. In the book of Hebrew chapter 10, told us that in chapter 10. Now, Hebrew chapter 10 is quoted from one of the Old Testament Psalms. Hebrew chapter 10 and verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice it often, thou wouldest not, but a body. So I know what he prepared me. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. So I know what he went to prepare as a body. We can see the day that he prepared that body. Is that right? Because we are now called the body of Christ. Right. So a body thou hast prepared me. A body. Lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. Now, this body was prepared before the foundation of the world, if you study this out. All right. But God had to reveal this to us in the new covenant. All right. A body that has prepared me. So, so let's go back and look at Psalms. Uh, let's look at Isaiah first. Isaiah 64 and 4. Now, the Apostle Paul really got this because when the Holy Ghost showed him, he didn't have anybody really to share this with, so he shared it with us. Thank God for that. In Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4, you're going to see this again. Isaiah is going to talk about it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, and verse 4. Since the, the beginning of the world, so he's going to tell us when, when did God prepare this body. From since the beginning of the world, I look at it like this. If there has not been an Adam, the, the first Adam, there could not have been a second Adam. Can you see the body? Let me say it again. If there had never been a first Adam, there could not have been a second Adam. What do you think God put the first, put the second Adam? In the second Adam. <laughs> the first man was natural. The second man was the Lord from the heaven. Well, if you look at Jesus the Christ, if you were there that day that you saw Jesus the Christ, you saw Jesus out here and the Father saw Christ in there, right? Isn't that the same thing? So you got to understand, but if he had never had a first Adam, he would have nowhere to put the second Adam. So why did he build the first Adam first? So he would have where to put the second Adam. It's no different from you. What do you expect God to do? If he had never given you a, a, a life in this earth, he would have nowhere to put his spirit. He gave you, his, gave you the flesh to house the soul. You do know that, right? God gave you your flesh so the soul would have somewhere to live on earth. But after your body is done, you have another building, right? Which is Christ where your soul going to live. That, that's how you know you're saved. So if you're not in Christ, then you're not ready for eternity. In eternity, there's no time. There's no tomorrow. There's no next day. There's no see you tomorrow. There's none of that in eternity. And eternity never ends. It's everlasting. 
You are in time because you're in the flesh. That's why the clock is ticking. One day you gotta get out of it. Yeah, I hope you have somewhere to go. So he said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And then he says, watch what he says, I'm gonna receive you to myself. Let me say it again. I'm gonna receive you to myself. See, we're still waiting for the Lord to come. We, haven't, we have not been convinced. We're still waiting for a, 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 a coming back to get us, because that's what the evangelicals told us. That the Lord's going to come back for us. And when I get through here today, you're going to understand, he did not say he's coming back for you. He said, I'm coming back for the saints. See, but you think, you're the saints, because they told you that too. Well, then he said, I go prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Watch the next part, that's where I am. Not where I'm going, where I am. There you may be also. Well, let's look at verse 6. Let's see where I am. Where I am, there you may be also. Where am I? Where, where is he? Where I am? Jesus said to them, I'm, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father. So where we all supposed to have been going, we got saved. Yeah. To the Father. In my Father's house, there are many mentioned. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So he didn't really say heaven, did he? But that's who the Father is. He's the kingdom of heaven. Now let's go to verse 10, same chapter. John 14 and 10. He's going to tell you where I am. Now, if Jesus said he wanted us to be where I am, well, where is Jesus? Here he is. Believe it thou not that I'm in the Father. Wait a minute. If Jesus is in the Father, then where do I supposed to be? In the Father, because that's where he is. Jesus said, I'm in the Father and the Father in me. Then he said this, the word that I speak I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells where? The Father that dwells in me, he do the work. Where does the Father dwell? In the Son. You just can't say in me now. Who is me? Right. So Christ is talking. Christ said the Father dwells in me. So where does the Father live? In the Son. Come on, everybody. In the Son. So why do God want you in Christ? Let me ask you again, let me ask you again, where does the Son live? So why do the Father want you in the Son? That's the only way you can be in the Father, right? So we're going to show you that. Uh, let's look at Mark 2, 22. There's another one. Look at Mark chapter 2, verse 22. Uh, start verse 21. And we got that same thing in Matthew 9, 16, and 17. Let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse 21, 22. So we have to understand Jesus taught in parables, but all of these things he was telling them, had no man soweth a piece of new cloth in an old garment. So what is he talking about? Now, you may, if you're not saved, you're looking at clothes. But he's not talking clothes. He's talking about your soul and your body. See, no man sew a piece of cloth on an old garment. Else the peace that filleth it up, taking away the old, and the rent is made worse. Or it's going to tear. The old is going to tear the new. The new is going to tear the old. Are you listening? All right. And then he's going to go to the next, next thing. He says, and no man put his new wine in old bottles. Now he's trying to tell you that's the old bottle. So I can't put the new wine in the old man or when the soul that's not saved. How many see what I'm saying? But new wine, if you do that, the bottle is going to burst and the wine is going to spill. Now remember the wine, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And then the bottle will be marred like the potter. He's talking about the potter talk. But the new wine must be put in new bottles. The next part of that up says, 
It must be put in the new bodies. Okay, so, it, so what did God do? He had to make a new man. What new man did he make? It's not hard. We don't, oh, he only created two men. That's Adam, first Adam and last Adam. Ain't that right? So if he's going to make a new man, who's the new man? Christ. Now, who did he put the new wine in? You got to know the scripture too. Anybody know the scripture? Acts 2.33. So he put the new wine in the new man. See, see, when people tell you, you got to be baptized in water in Jesus' name uh, to get the Holy Spirit, no, that was the Old Testament type of shadow. You got to have Christ in you now to be saved. I'm always waiting on you. You're never waiting on me. All right. Where are we going? Acts chapter 2, verse 33. That's where we're going. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 33, told you where God put the new wine. Only one man received the Holy Spirit from the Father. The Father could only give one man the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was the inheritance. Who is the Holy Ghost? Who is your inheritance? Right, some of y'all still don't know or you just won't answer. I'm trying to get you to answer because if you don't know this, then you don't know who's your inheritance. Who is your inheritance? The Holy Spirit or Christ, right? Well, say that with me. Christ or the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, I really appreciate y'all paying attention and then participating because I got to make sure you're saved. I don't need to be doing your eulogy and then you don't even know you're saved talking all this good stuff about you. I want to make sure you're saved. That's my responsibility. All right, let's go look at it in Scripture. Acts chapter 2, verse 33 told me that therefore Jesus Christ, being by the right hand of God exalted, had received of the Father, what did he receive? The promise of the Holy Ghost. What did he receive? He received the promise of the Holy Ghost. He has showed forth this which you now see. Right, so Jesus received, say that with me, Jesus received the Holy Spirit. All right, now his responsibility from that day forward is to be the one who will give you the Holy Ghost. So we saw that in the book of Acts. Isn't that right? Jesus told them that. He told them when the spirit of truth has come, he told them that I will send you the Holy Ghost. Anybody remember that? All right, we know that either in John 14, somebody can find that from in John 14 or 15 or 16, he says, I will send you the comforter. Well, who is the comforter? The Holy Ghost. So on, why would Jesus say, I will send you the comforter? Because the Father would only give one man the comforter. That's why Jesus says, I will pray to the Father and he will give you the Holy Ghost. If Jesus did not receive the Holy Ghost, we would never have gotten the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, I will pray the Father, and he will send you the Holy Ghost. So he gave the Holy Ghost to one man, that's Jesus Christ, and then Jesus Christ, because I received Jesus Christ, said, because, because I received Jesus Christ in my heart, I receive everything that the Father has. All right, so how did I receive the Holy Ghost? I tell you the answer, then I ask you the question. So how did you receive the Holy Ghost? When you receive the Son. I receive the Holy Ghost when I receive Christ. Because what did God put the Holy Ghost? Isn't that simple? All right. So if God put the Holy Ghost or the new wine in the new, put the new wine in the new wine skin or the new bottle, when I receive the bottle in me, which is Christ, then everything I need is in the bottle. The water is in the glass. So God put the glass in me. So I would never have to be worried about water again. Isn't that right? All right, that's what you got to understand. So don't ever let nobody deceive you with nobody can receive the Holy Ghost. It does not mean I can't lay my hands on you and you go out, pass out in the Spirit, but you don't have the Holy Ghost. It's a different in laying hands on somebody passing out in the Spirit than receiving the Holy Ghost. 
The Holy Ghost can come upon you. You can feel the power of the Spirit in your body can, under that anointing can pass out. That that's, that's, that's can actually happen. And it does actually happen. But that don't mean you're saved. Ain't that right? It is on the screen, John 14 6. I will pray the Father. Watch what Jesus says. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Then I want the one that says, verse 26, 14, 26. See, if you listen to Jesus, he told you I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. He know because the Father can only get the Holy Ghost to him. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He shall bring all things to your remembrance. See, he could not go into the Son's approval because the Son is the one that had to send, send you the Holy Ghost. John 16 and verse 7. Let's go back to John 16 and 7. See, so if you look at the Word of God, Jesus told them that he's going to send them the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Matter of fact, he can't come because... If I depart, I will send him. Can you see that? So if Jesus had not raised from the dead, we could not have had eternal life. Because he had to give us the spirit. The Holy Ghost is called the spirit of Christ. Everybody understand that? I'm not going to do no cartwheels, so you might well say amen. Amen. All right, so now you have to know how you receive the Holy Ghost. You receive the Holy Ghost because Jesus Christ received the Holy Ghost. Now let's show you Acts chapter 19, verse 1. I'm just going to give you this just to show you something. Then we're going to go over in the Old Testament. I got some stuff over there I got to show you. In the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 1, the Apostle Paul had begun his ministry. Now this is why a lot of people believe that you, got, you get the Holy Ghost by water baptism. But they don't understand baptism is in three dimensional. Everything God teaches you, you got to find the third dimension. Don't just find one and say, see there, I told you. Yeah, that's just one. Find two more. Here we go. Acts 19.1. It came to pass that while Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. Remember? They were disciples. They were John disciples. He said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Now, he just told you how to receive the Holy Ghost. If you can read, you just heard how to receive. Let me say it again. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Okay, how do you re receive the Holy Ghost? It, see, if the Bible tells you, just listen to it. You got to believe. But the key is you got to find out what you got to believe. So he's asking them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there be in the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, if they haven't heard, they sure don't believe, right? Come on now, give me a good amen. amen. All right. He said to them, unto what then will you baptize? So he's going to go back to them and find out who the disciples they are. If he found out how they were baptized, he's going to find out what? Who the disciples they are. They said to him, on the John's baptism. Oh, them John disciples. They follow John. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. All right. Now, automatically, if you in the word a lot, what verse would automatically come to your mind? Acts 2.38, if you was apostolic. Because that's what they talk about, the baptism of repentance. Can we go back there? We'll be right back to this verse. Acts 19, what verse we at right now? We're at Acts 19, verse 4. We'll come back to Acts 19 and 4. Let's go to Acts 2, 36. Let's bag up to 36. Now, when Peter was preaching this message in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, therefore let all the house of Israel, so we know Peter was preaching to what audience? The house of Israel. So the house of Israel is not American. It's not Afro-Americans. It's not black, it's not white, it's not Latino, right? These are Jews. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, because we didn't crucify Jesus, did we? 
he has made him both Lord and Christ. So he's talking to the house of Israel. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, now when the house of Israel heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now I don't know how in the world we got a miracle in that verse. What shall we do? Then Peter said to them Jews, repent and be baptized. Why? Because that's John baptism. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, watch this, in the name of Jesus Christ. So they had moved from John baptism to Jesus baptism. Follow me alone, I don't think you caught it. Just listen, watch, watch what happens here. Repent, uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, watch this, in the name of Jesus Christ. So they had moved from John baptism to Jesus baptism. The first baptism is John baptism. The second baptism is Jesus' baptism. The third baptism is the Holy Ghost baptism. So you got to know that to know what you're talking about. You can't guess this stuff. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch this. For the remission of sin. Why do they need to be baptized in, in the water in the name of Jesus Christ? For the remission of sin. Now the reason why is grace hadn't come yet. Why did they have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins? Grace hadn't come yet. Grace is going to come by Jesus Christ. I, I mean, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, but Paul is the only man that preached grace. Peter's preaching. Now, when Paul come, Paul going to let them know Christ sent me not to baptize. So how am I going to get the Holy Spirit if Christ had asked me, because God not giving out the Holy Ghost no more like that. So you have to be able to know the word and not just go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and that, that jerk come on you, see? That don't make it right. Acts 2, 38 again. Let me, did I finish that? Watch what he said to them. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. Because once the sins are remitted, now they can receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost, which is free. But they could not receive the Holy Ghost until what happened? Come on, I need y'all to participate now. Y'all, I got a lot of word if y'all pull it out of me. Pull it, pull it. Come on. They could not receive the Holy Ghost until they received the remission of sin. They had to receive the remission of sins. Let's go to Acts 26, 18. Let me show it to you. This is why you hear me always say so many people won't receive the Holy Spirit because, first of all, they don't believe they've been forgiven. They haven't received forgiveness of sin. You have to receive the forgiveness of sin before you receive the Holy Spirit. There's nothing you doing but just believing. Here's Paul's message. Open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, turn them from the power of God Turn them from the power of Satan to God that they might do what? Receive. Come on, receive. You see that big word? You got to receive what? And then there's a comma and then there's an and. And is a conjunction, just like two train caboose. You're connecting. What you receiving? You're receiving two things. Number one, forgiveness. forgiveness. Number two, you can't receive your inheritance until you receive forgiveness of sin. Get the Lord a big hand clap for that. You cannot receive, you cannot receive your inheritance until you receive forgiveness of sin because when, the way you are saved is because you have received forgiveness of sin. And to receive Christ, die for your sin. When you receive Christ, you receive the forgiveness of sin. Say that when I received Christ, I received the forgiveness of sin because that's who Christ is, right? Right, he is the payment for my sin. Ain't that right? He is the, he, what that word is called, a down payment, what that, that word is called? The propitiation for my sins, right? That's, that's in John, John chapter one. He's the propitiation for my sin. He's the down payment for my sins. So when I receive Christ, I receive the payment for my sins. Now I can receive the Holy Ghost. So let's go show you that in the book of Ephesians chapter one, verse 13 and 14. We, we getting it. You got to receive the Holy Ghost first because you must become a son first before you can get an inheritance. 
You can't get no inheritance just because you're part of your faith. And I mean, that was, I mean this, is, this would be credible, but it's not enough. Thank God you're part of your faith. But you cannot get your inheritance from the Father just because you're part of your faith. That makes you special. Got prayed for this morning. 4.30, you was prayed for. Prayed for again at 6 some this morning. But that do not cause you to get your inheritance. All right. But I'm praying for you. Amen. I want you to know the word. All right, let's show you that verse I asked, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. All right, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14, watch what it says. In whom you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth. So I minister the word of God to you, heard the word of truth. You trust the gospel for you. This is the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after you believe, what do you have to do now? You have to believe. Once you believe, you are sealed. Just like this glass, once I put the top on it and shut it, it's sealed. Your soul has been sealed. Nothing can contaminate it again. It's sealed in the spirit. What did God put your soul in his spirit, in the spirit of Christ? He put Christ in you and he put you in Christ, right? Right. Your soul has been sealed. In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed, watch what you were sealed with, that Holy Spirit of promise. Remember that Holy Spirit of promise is what Jesus Christ received? All right. So you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Ghost. God put the new wine in the new wine skin. So when I receive the new wine skin, the new wine is in the new wine skin. So you receive the Holy Ghost because you receive Christ. Do everybody see that? All right, nobody just went out here and poof, you got it? No, you had to receive Christ. Somebody had to preach Christ to you, you receive Christ, and then the Holy Ghost is in Christ. Ain't that right? Ephesians 1 and 3, let me give you a couple more. Ephesians 1 and 3, and I gave you Romans 8, 32. Ephesians 1 and 3, every time that everything God gave you, he put it in Christ, even the Holy Spirit. He is the perpetuation for our sin. Uh, 1 John 2, 2 says, he the propitiation for our sin, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. That word propitiation means what? He's the final payment. So your sin's been paid for. You don't go out and just live any kind of way because God gave you a free credit card. Amen. You, just, you ought to be filled with thanksgiving. Every time you mess up and say, oops, thank God he paid for this. Praise the Lord. That's just like you had your cart and you go through Kroger sometime, you put something in there and just say, man, I thank God for that credit card. If you didn't give me that credit card, I got to put some of this stuff back and I get to the counter. But he paid it all. I said he paid it all. Amen. We don't abuse it because he paid for it. All right. All right. Now let's look at it. It says Ephesians 1 and 3. It said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has past tense. Now blessed us. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So all of your blessings, everything God bless you with, he put it where? In Christ. And when you receive Christ, you received it all. Ain't that right? But now you got to be taught. That goes back to Ephesians 1.15. This is why I said to you, you probably hear me say it a thousand times, listen, listen, listen. Because you, if you're not taught this, it's not going to work. You must receive something to get your inheritance. And this is what you got to receive. And this is why I pray for you to receive this. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 15. This is what Paul prayed for the church. This is my prayer for you. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Now he's talking about, and your love to all the saints. He's talking about, after I heard you are saved. Because that's what you got is faith and love. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love to all saints, I cease not to praise for you. I cease not to, thank, to give thanks for you. Make a mention of you in my prayers. He's going to tell you what he prayed. Here it is, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you something. Well, if you don't know how to receive, how can he give it to you? How many know how do I receive from God? How do I receive from God? 
Yeah, I, Thanksgiving is how I receive, but there's another word I want to go with that. Believe. So you need to believe and be thankful, right? Come on, say, I must believe God and be thankful. All right, so that's how you receive from God. If you don't, you, you just got to trust God, take him at his word. So he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you. If he had to give it to you, that means that you don't have it. It doesn't mean it's not in Christ. Everything you got is in this glass, but your spirit must draw it out. How do you receive from the spirit that's in you? Believing. In me, there's a glass of cool water, refreshing. But man, if I just had me a straw, I can't get to it. But I need something to put in there. If I had a straw, which would be my faith, and I stick that straw down there, ooh, yeah. Every now and then I need some more. All I can do is, your straw in your glass is your faith that goes into your water and draws it into your soul. Can you get a lot of big hand for that? So you can sit there all day long with that glass of water, with that cold glass of water in your chest. Blessed be the God and Father who has blessed us. That's Romans 832 is where we're going. All spiritual blessings in the heavenly places it is all in Christ. But God gave you faith to get what you need from God. Mm-hmm. You, you, I don't know why the Lord don't give me no water. They all got, draw. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 12, go to it. That's what he gave you the faith for. What he gave you the faith for. You're not going to get nothing because you boo-hooing. This is what people think. If I boo-hoo long enough and cry long, I cried and I cried. How can you cry all night long you don't get nothing? I'm going to tell you right now, I've done that. Been there and done that. I've been all up and down these pews over here, wiping them off and crying. Ain't going to make no difference. Ain't going to get nothing. I, I have to get up and just believe God. God said it. And God will do what he says if I walk in it. Yeah. Here it is. Here's your answer. Therefore, come on, with what? With what? Why did God give you joy? So you can draw the water out of the well of salvation. Why did he give it to you? So you can draw the water. You can sit here and cry. You can boo-hoo all you want to. But you about to get your straw out and start drawing. With joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. The, the well is full of water. You know, the, the woman told Jesus Christ in John chapter 4, what did he tell her? Sir, the well is deep, and you don't have nothing to draw with. <laughs> Telling Jesus he ain't got nothing to draw. Look at somebody and say, I got something to draw with. Why does the enemy want to shut your mouth? Why does he want you boohooing and not rejoicing? Because if you're rejoicing, you can be drawing water. Somebody, somebody said, somebody said, I can draw water while I'm sitting in church. You can be sitting right here in church drawing water. Mm -hmm. And I can tell when you get a good draw. Ooh, hallelujah. So that's why you got to understand the enemy knows what you have. He, he got to be able to some way try to stop you. If, he, if you know what you had, he can't stop you. That's what the joy for. The joy of the Lord is my street, strength, near my, near my eight and ten, right? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Therefore, with joy shall I draw water of the will of salvation. So you got to use your faith. You can't, you can't just be out here hoping it's going to happen. They had a this time, watch what Nehemiah going to say. Therefore, Nehemiah said to them, go your ways. Eat the fat, drink the, sweat, drink the sweet, I'm sorry. Send posts to them whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be sorry. Don't come here with that stuff. The joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Say the joy. Come on, say it loud. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why you must put on your strength every morning. Every morning, every morning. Come on, look at somebody and say, put on your strength. Put on your 
Man, when you see people walk around their head down, bowed down, going through something, I don't know how hard it is. Hard out here, rough out here. Just stop what you're doing. Put on your strength. Put on your garments of praise. Put on your strength and put on your garments of praise. And watch things change. I like that kind of can. God has given us everything. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of. They are mighty through God. They are to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We got some. God gave us praise. He gave us joy. He gave us faith. We just got to use what we have. Yes, sir. I think you read it. I think you read it. Let's go to Romans 9. No, I got to go to 1 Corinthians 2. There it is. Isaiah 52 and 1 said, Awake, awake. Awake. Well, you're already awake now. You, you, you raised from the dead. That's what he means. Because once you're risen from the dead, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Henceforth there shall be no more community. No more coming the uncircumcised without a covenant and unclean. Put on your strength. That's what has supposed to happen. And that's who Christ is. That's why the new covenant said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I put on Christ. Well, put him on. Put on, put on this helmet. Of, oh, I got all this on. Well, act like you got this on. You got to walk in this stuff. Now, I gave you a verse. I got to go back to it. I didn't finish it. No, uh, I was on something there. And, uh, no. I just finished the Ephesians. There was something right before that or after that that led me there. Uh, no. I'm done with Acts chapter 19. Well, I'm done with that. Ephesians 1, 14. I, I did 13, but not 14. That's what I need. Thank you all, sir. Thank you for helping. I did Ephesians 1, 13, but I didn't finish 14. Let's go back to 13. Ephesians 1, 13, and then 14. In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I got that far and I didn't finish because I want to show you what the Holy Ghost is for. Uh, verse 14, Ephesians 1, 14 now. All right, it called the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14 said, it's the earnest. Now the word earnest means down payment. If you ever bought property, you always had to give them some money first. We bought the first, we bought our, we moved from over to Elizabeth Lake. They told us that we need to have some earnest money. That's when a realtor asks you for earnest money, he asks you for a down payment. And if you can't, you don't have no earnest money. So say for example, he said, well, give me uh, $10,000. I said, well, he said, no, just give me some earnest money. I said, what would that be? Just give me a thousand. Now that's more like it. I'm talking about what we just came from. But anyway, we gave him $1,000. He said, well, anyway, this is going to go towards your bill, your loan, $1,000. I said, okay, but that was called what? Earnest. earnest money. Earnest money is called what? Down payment. All right. So the earnest money is so you to get the rest. The earnest money is a guarantee that you will get the rest so when God gave you the Holy Ghost, he gave you the earnest of your inheritance. He did not give you all your inheritance. In Christ, so all your inheritance is in Christ, but you have to receive the Holy Ghost first. You everybody understand that? Yes. If I don't have the Holy Ghost, I'm none of the hills, right? Right, so I had to become a son. The, the Holy Ghost, said the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is how I become a son. Become now I can get my inheritance. Right. Everything else you can get now because you're a son. So all this stuff God is blessing us with is not because you've been so good or bad. It's because you are his son. Okay? Look at that verse again. Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the purchase, or redemption of the person's possession unto the praise of his glory. 
All right, it's gonna last until we, are left, we have gone from here, right? All right, now, now let's go to 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 13. 1 Corinthians 2. I'm gonna start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 2, and I'm gonna read all the way from verse 1 through 13. I need to teach this. That we, read, we, we quoted that, thank you very much. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him once he receive Christ? He freely gave us all things. So this, what I wanted and I was talking to you was talking to you about Ephesians 1. That's exactly what I was talking about. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now I know all of y'all remember now, won't you? Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1. And I was reading verse... I was reading the prayer, remember? I suppose y'all were following me, helping me with my notes. Ephesians 1, 16. I thought you had my, had my back. Ephesians 1, 16. Paul said, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Remember who I was? Here's the prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you something. Here, remember when I told you he's going to give you something? He's going to give you the spirit of wisdom. Remember, if he's going to give this to you, after he had given us his son, how should he not with him freely give us all things, right? So he's not charging you for it. So how do you get it? One word. What is it? I see some of y'all, you won't say it. Y'all going to want it, but you won't. Well, say it. But if you will say it long enough, you will start doing it. Did you know that? Do you know you do what you say? Usually you don't do it if you don't say it. That's why even children got this on us. Say it, mama, say it. <laughs> I hear my children all the time, well, say it, dad, just say it. Because they know if I said it, they're going to come back home next year, Gene. You say it. <laughs> how many know when you say it, you do it? Right, that's how you live your life. Most people don't go to church Sunday. They say Saturday night, I ain't going tomorrow. <laughs> you ask people don't go to church Sunday, I ain't going tomorrow. It ain't even sadder yet. <laughs> but Monday morning, I'm going to work Monday. It ain't even, it's Thursday or past week. I'm going next month. I'm going to work. Y'all, they're going to say it. Because you, you hold yourself to what you're going to say. All right, now let's, let's look at that again. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Here's the prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. So you need to understand that. You need to mark these in your Bible because this is what I'm praying for God to give you. I know when you get them because you don't know the word. You can't know the word without these three things. Number one may give you the spirit of wisdom. What else? What else? And, the, and the revelation in the knowledge of him. You just can't have the knowledge you got to have the revelation in the knowledge of him. So all of this knowledge in the word of God, a man can have knowledge, but it's just to him. You read, if you hear him, he's like he's reading a book, like a child in school. He doesn't have a revelation of the knowledge. So Jesus taught the knowledge, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Paul gave you the revelation of that knowledge. You understand? Okay. All right, let's, let's see. That's what he gave us. Is there anything else before I move on? Don't let me have to come back. Verse 18, now 18 is the rest of it. The eye of your understanding being enlightened. You see the next number three? Remember I said that's three? Go back to 16 so I can show you the three. There are three things. I cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers. Number one. Next verse, that's what we're waiting on. The, the, that the God, of our Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you number one. Now, you need to put these on the board for the people or something so they can help you out back there. Number one, the spirit of wisdom. Number two, the revelation and knowledge of him. Everybody understand this? And number three is the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That is the, that is the three things. Now, you have to look at that yourself and have to say, do I have that already? Because if you don't have that, that's why you don't know the word. Let me say it again. If I don't have that, I don't know the word. So that means every day I should be saying to the Lord, these are the three things. Put them on your refrigerator. Looks good, girl. Look like my daughter, Louisiana. 
Love you, girl. Look, she been my daughter a long time. How long have you been my daughter? Before you went to college over there, how many years? 30? Woo, Jesus. She been my daughter a long time. God sent her from Louisiana to me. Am I lying? She'll tell you. I'm Papa. All right, here we go. Three things we want to make sure you put this on the table. Number one, how many got it? The what? All right, I want you to say it with me. Father, I thank you now for the spirit of wisdom. All right, every day, if you got a refrigerator, type it out, put it on your refrigerator. Ephesians 1, 16 through 19. Put on your, put on your, these three things every day. This is what I want. Because if you get these three things, you're going to know the other three things that I got for you. That's what it's the hope you're calling. What is the riches of inheritance? And then you know what is the power. What is his power? All right, let's look at these three things one more time. Number one is what? The spirit of wisdom. Number two? They're, they're on the board now. The spirit of wisdom, number one. Number two, the revelation of the knowledge of him. That's number two. Number three is the eyes of understanding being enlightened. Now, you need to put that somewhere or buy the DVD. It's always going to be on there. But you need to do that. Do like Brother Gene. Brother Gene, buy every one of my DVDs. I don't think he ever missed one. He has a treasure, just my DVDs. So I know what I'm going to do when I go to his house. Say, hey, man, let's watch it. <laughs> All right, he getting ready for Quebec. I know what he getting ready for. The spirit of wisdom. Say the spirit of wisdom. The revelation of the knowledge of him. The of knowledge. Eyes of my understanding. Of my understanding. Being in light. Yeah. Now you got to have all of that just for the next verse. <laughs> put, the, put the next verse up there, which is verse 18, right? So that's why I'm saying I'm teaching on verse 18. I'm trying to show you how bad I am. You can't teach verse 18 if you don't have them three things. That's what I'm trying to show y'all that God gave you a pastor with those three things. If I didn't have that, I couldn't teach. I'm telling you, listen, I've been wanting to teach this a long time. But I couldn't. I get so far and I had to, I didn't know, I didn't know what these three things were. But when God gave me the spirit of wisdom, the revelation and knowledge of him, eyes of my understanding was enlightened, then I can teach number one, what is it? No, nah, I'm on verse 18, not 19. No, 18 is the eyes you understand and being enlightened that you may know. Number one, this is why I'm able to teach it. What is the hope of his calling? I've been wanting to know what's the hope of his calling all these years. I couldn't teach it. I teach it now. I already taught it in the storehouse. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I practiced when I went to Sacramento on just the night such crime. I tried to teach what is the hope of his calling for two nights and couldn't get it. I said, when I get back and do a faith, I'm going to teach this. I was ready. It took two nights up there not knowing to get here to know. I told the Lord, I'm not going to get off up until you show it to me. He showed me what's the hope of his calling. That's why I want you to get the tape. He called you for relationship. He called you for fellowship. That's the hope of his calling. Not your calling, his calling. He called you from where you were. Don't even think about where you were. But he called you from where you were. To come to him so you can be his son. Oh, is that awesome, Sister Cannon? Awesome. Called me out of darkness into his marvelous life. Then he called me so I would have revelation, I would have re relationship and fellowship with him. Now I fellowship with him right now. He called me, this is why he called me. Then the day he's telling me, about my inheritance, which is his inheritance. What is his rich and glory inheritance in the saints? Can somebody say amen? Look at somebody said they're in the saints. Now let me, let me just show you that first. We're going to show you they're in the saints. Look at somebody said they're in the saints though. All right, now let's go look at this inheritance of the saints. Let's go, to, uh, let's go look at this because they are in the saints. I want to give you a few things because when I found out that this stuff was in the saints, let's go to Deuteronomy 33, 1 through 4. Deuteronomy 33, 1 through 4. Just going to show you that this inheritance is in the saints. Deuteronomy 33, 1 through 4. Now, 
I have to go back here because if you realize that these people were saints in Deuteronomy, then you know it wasn't you. So this is why I'm showing you Old Testament first. You, wasn't, you ain't no saint. Well, you saints now in Christ, but this is not who he was talking about at the time. Do everybody understand that? When he wrote the book. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before he, his death, the children of Israel. He said, the Lord come from Sinai, rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 saints. See, so you got people today would tell us, the Lord coming for the saints. See, if you read Deuteronomy, you ain't, wasn't no saints back then. Okay, he said, the Lord came from Sinai, I rose up from Seir, Mount Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran. He came with 10,000 of saints. Next verse. His right hand won a fiery law. You know you were not on the law. For them, the law for them. Yea, he loved the people and all his saints are in his hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. They were called saints. Okay, Moses commanded us a law. See, all that was them. You, no, Moses didn't give you no law. Okay, now, now let's show you another. Just going to show you. Let's go to... Uh, Psalm 30. All through the word of God, you'll see these. Psalm 30 and verse 4. We're going to do a few quickly because we only got about four more minutes. Psalm 30 and verse 4. We go from there to Psalm 31, 23. Psalm 30 and verse 4. All the way through the word of God, Old Testament told you saints. Sing unto the Lord, all ye saints. And you know people quote a script, they get up in the church. Sing to the Lord, saints. I said, come on, sing to the Lord, saints. Don't know a bit more what they're talking about. Give thanks to the remembers of his holiness. Sing to the Lord, O ye saints of his. Though Israel. Psalm 31, 23. Remember, we was not saved through the new covenant. This title was given to them in the old covenant. It also meant holy ones when you study the word of God. O love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful, plentiful, rewardeth the proud doer. That's Psalm 31, 23. We're going to go through another. Psalm 15, verse Five, Psalm 50 and verse 5. I'm going to give you a few from the New Testament. I'm going to go to the next. Gather thy saints together. Gather thy saints together to me. Gather thy saints together. See, it wasn't coming back for you. Come back for the saints. Gather thy saints together unto me. Those that, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You didn't make no covenant with him by sacrifice. Zechariah 14, 5. We're talking about saints. Just to show you a couple more minutes. Zechariah 14, 5. So when you read in the Bible, and you, and you shall flee, told them to run to the valley of the mountain when Jesus came back for them. The valley of the mountain shall reach to Azar. Yea, you shall flee like you fled in before the earthquake in the days of Josiah, king of Judah, and the Lord shall, and the Lord my God shall come with all the saints with thee. So you wouldn't talk to you. All right, let's show you another one here. Acts, 20, Acts 26 and 10. Acts 26 and 10. Just going to give you this one and one more we've done. Acts 26 and 10, the apostle Paul persecuted Paul said, which things I also did in Jerusalem. And many other saints did I shut up in prison. He did not shut up the body of Christ. He shut up the saints in prison. Having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were, they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, the saints. One more, Romans 15, 25. So you have to know the word of God. Don't just listen to anybody tell you anything. Now, are we sanctified? Now, yes, we are. But then he was talking to them. Paul said, but now I go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. At Jerusalem, you did not have Gentiles at Jerusalem. Amen. My time is up. I thank you for yours. You only got half of the day's message, so I hope you hang around and get the next half which is the next service, which I will be continuing to talk about what is his rich and glorious inheritance. As a matter of fact, I just got started. Will you give the Lord a great big hand for his word?
Praise the Lord. 